Teen Gamer here, and well, you already know what this is. It is the Spiral Abyss 4.7 commentary video. So yeah, well, anyways, if you guys don't know what the commentary video series is, it is where I commentate over my run on Spiral Abyss and also give you guys tips and tricks. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, I talk about the teams I use. I also talk about the strategies I use to beat this um, Spiral Abyss because, well, I don't talk in my Spiral Abyss videos. So yeah, um, the commentary videos are just a way for me to talk to you guys about the uh, floors and give more insight on these. So yeah. Well, anyways, here is Chamber 1 first half, um, which is a bunch of Pyro and Electro Slimes. Um, you can just run a crowd controller like uh, Kazaha or Venti to make your life extremely easy um, because all you have to do is just beat uh, Chamber 1 and then just reconfigure your team, which is pretty easy. Um, but uh, you can just uh, use a DPS team like I am using right here with the uh, Mizuru Nervalette team um, to make your life well, way easier. Again, just run a really good team. You should be fine. Or a animal um, support. Um, same thing here for uh, the second half of Chamber 1, which is a bunch of uh, Hydro and Cryo Slimes. So, um, the Cryo Slimes are actually the worst part of this uh, chamber. And that's because the Cryo Slimes has one attack. One attack that you should watch out for that could basically ruin your whole three star run and that is its ice breath attack yeah it's ice breath attack you do not and i repeat you do not want it to do that because it does passive damage over time you do not want to do that um you'll see here in a moment yeah you see this uh ice breath attack yeah look at that monolith hp going down it is really bad but yeah i had to speed through that there you go i basically got it in 60 percent barely um any second longer and that monolith would be under 60% um, HP, which means I lose the 3-star run. So, yeah. But, just like monolith force, you could just take your time, of course. And here is chamber 2. So, the first half is just a bunch of vish haps. So, um, well, you could just run a uh, geo character with a shield and you should be fine. Because if it rolls into you, it gets stunned. So, yeah. Or you could just be like me and just... DPS your whole way through because all, all they are is just big targets that you can just hit. Um, which, well, if you have a big enough damage team, they should be done in like under 30 seconds. And here is the second half of Chamber 2, um, Floor 11, and that is the Phantasmals. So yeah, um, just like the Phantasmals and Fontaine, these guys are tanky as crap. So you want to bring... Uh, well, reactions. You want to bring Pyro. You want to bring Cryo. You want to bring Dendro. Basically, anything that can react to these things. Because once they go Berserk, which is this form right here, you want to kill them as fast as possible because they are relentless. They don't get stunned. They don't get staggered. They literally attack endlessly. So you just want to kill them as soon as possible before they start doing this. Because the sooner you kill them, the sooner they don't do this. Because... Um, if they do this, they get increased um, interruption resistance, of course, and also get increased defense, which is basically something you'd never want in Abyss. So yeah, but there it is. That is Chamber 2. So here is Chamber 3. Um, just a bunch of random enemies on Chamber 3. You have um, Slingers, you have the Animal Boxer, and then you have these Ruin Drakes. So yeah, um... Really nothing that bad either. They are just um, a bunch of enemies. So you just run your best team and they should be good. Because there's really nothing for you to bring. Unless you struggle with the Pyro Slinger um, when it brings the shield. Then bring Hydro. So yeah. But you really don't need that anyway. And the second half of Chamber 3 is the Jade Plume Terror Shroom. So if you already know how his mechanics work. Then um, you already know how to beat this thing. And if you don't. Well, it has two forms. You can either run Electro or Pyro. Doing either one of those could basically stun the Jade Plume Terror Shroom and make it useless. So yeah, that's basically it. Just bring Hydra or bring Electro and Pyro. So yeah. Well, anyways, there is Floor 11. It's time to move on to, well, Floor 12. Alright, so here we are in Floor 12. So, well, um, as I said before in the previous video... Um, well, the previous Spiral Abyss video that I did. The reason why it is 
six out of nine stars is because I failed. Yeah, one of my characters died too early. So I basically had to restart this um, abyss to basically get a clean run. So yeah. Um, but as for the teams I use right here, it is the um, Hyper Bloom team, um, which is basically just Electro, Hydro, Dendro. You can literally run whatever you want. And then for the second half, I just ran the Meta Nouvellette team. So yeah. But um, here is Chamber 1 first half, which is a bunch of random enemies again. So you have those um, robots, you have the um, Ruin guards, and then you'll basically have Ruin Drakes, I think. You have to fight so yeah it's just literally a bunch of random enemies you have to fight basically just burst them down as fast as you can um the only um i guess trouble that you should face in chamber one first half is the first three enemies because if you take too long then it basically goes invisible and you have to react with a electro or dendro reaction but that should never happen if you have well really good teams for floor 12 so yeah but um as you see here uh, just quickly burst these down as fast as possible with your best teams. Uh, mainly you want to run a Electro team because on Chamber 3, um, there is going to be the um, Desert uh, Guard, which is the uh, robot triangle thingy. And you need Dendro or Electro for those, so yeah. And, well, the final enemies for the first half of Chamber 1 is these, yeah. The Aramites. So, of course, you want to, uh, of course, take out the Vulture and the um, Scorpion first. Because once you do that, they basically become, well, stunned. And once they become stunned, they are easy to defeat. So, yeah. Um, basically, you want to kill their Personas. <laughs> before, uh, well, you could kill them before they summon them. Or you could kill their Personas to basically just kill them off. So, yeah. And as for the second half... It is a bunch of enemies as well. So you have, well, you have Pyro Abyss Mages, which are pretty easy to deal with. And then you have the Lectors. So yeah, um, basically bringing a Hydro character is a must for this floor. It is a must because you want to take out these shields as fast as possible. Especially the Lectors because you don't want them to live for too long. Because they basically decrease your HP a lot. And you don't want that to happen. So yeah. But um, as long as you bring good supports um, like Farina or bring good Hydro characters like Nouvellet or maybe like Barbara or something. Basically anything that could deal with um, Pyro Shields, you should be fine. So yeah, just bring any Hydro character and then they are gone for good. And then the last enemies here are the Knights. Um, basically don't bring a Shielder. If you are going to bring a Shielder, make sure they don't hit you with the shield or else their mechanics will happen so you don't want that to happen so basically just stay away keep your distance if you do have a shield and you should be fine so yeah there it is there is chamber one complete um kind of easy overall the only hard part is the lectors so yeah make sure you watch out for that and here is chamber two first half which has the Mangu Kenki. So this thing is pretty easy to defeat, of course. It's the Mangu Kenki. It basically has two phases. One is its normal phase, and two is when he actually does the puppet thing, the puppet phase, where he basically uh, switches from normal and then cryo form and animal form. So yeah, um, that's basically the main form you want to watch out for. But this thing has literally, um, well, it literally has like no health as long as you like have really strong teams like the well hyper bloom team as you see here he's literally destroying it like the hyper bloom team is destroying the mangu kenki so yeah um i guess the only annoying part that the mangu kenki does is it teleports a lot so you have to basically um keep chasing it um and do as much damage as you can so yeah make sure it doesn't waste your time um and as for the second half it is a bunch of random enemies again, yeah. Um, you're probably going to see a pattern here. Um, this floor has a bunch of random enemies. So yeah. For the first two enemies, it is the samurai. Make sure you defeat them both if possible. Because if you leave one alive, it heals itself fully. So yeah. And next up, we have the uh, pyro minigun robots. Uh, make sure you defeat those as well. And then you have rift hounds. Yeah, rift hounds. Um, these things love to do corrosion, so make sure you defeat them as fast as possible, too. So, yeah. Um, you might be wondering, just bring an animal character, right? And you're absolutely right, because 
the uh, second half of floors will always have random enemies. So yeah, bringing in Animo or Crowd Controller is extremely vital for this. But as long as you have AoE damage dealers, you should be fine too. Like Monsieur Nervalette right here, who is a AoE damage dealer. So yeah, AoE damage dealers are key for the second half. For the first half, just bring um, your best characters. Um, which is basically just bring Electro or Dendro for a specific boss that you'll see here coming up, which is right about now. So yeah, but that is um, the second half of Chamber 2. Not that bad either. I mean, the only bad part is, of course, the abundant of enemies that you have to clear. And I guess the one wheel guy. Yeah. <laughs> and here is Chamber 3. So yeah. Um, as you see here, you have to do the Desert King's Guard, which is an extremely annoying enemy that loves to go invisible a lot. So, um, in the first 10 seconds, you basically have to deal with its appendages, um, deal with its appendages quickly, and it basically becomes invisible, and you can either use Electro or Dendro. Dendro is the easiest way because you literally can just attack it directly, but if you're gonna be using Electro, then just attack its appendages again. So, yeah. But um, once it's down like this, make sure to burst it down as fast as possible. Um, do as much damage as you can to this thing. Um, because uh, the second half is more brutal than the first half. So yeah, make sure you deal with this as fast as you can. So yeah. Um, I did come close to defeating this thing, but it did turn invisible, which is really unfortunate. Which I think happens right now. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. It basically slowed me down. So yeah. But um, the Desert King is easy to deal with as long as you bring Electro and Dendro, its mechanics basically don't matter to you anymore. So yeah, the only thing you have to worry about is killing its appendages. So yeah. And as for the second half, oh boy, this thing is tough. Okay, so the first thing you have to deal with is, well, Pyro, Fatui Agent, and also Pyro Slingers, which are really annoying in itself because they love to put up shields. And also the Pyro Fatui Agent loves to go invisible. Make sure that thing never, and I mean never, goes invisible because, well, it, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. And here we go. Here is the other hard part, which is the Seahorses and the Vulture. And then upcoming is the Crab and then the Scorpion. So yeah, these things love to attack relentlessly, as you see here, especially... The Dendro, um, well, the Samaru uh, creatures, which is the Vulture and the uh, Scorpion. Those things love to attack so much. So yeah, you want to kill these things as fast as you can. Um, good luck with that, by the way. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Good luck. As for the Scorpion, I think he's probably even more annoying. Because, uh, well, if you have uh, Pyro on you, which is pretty often because these crabs have Pyro shields, you basically get overloaded. Which is the reaction. You basically get knock knocked back over and over and over again. You do not want that to happen. And also this thing loves to attack relentlessly as you see there. He does never. He never gets staggered. So yeah, you want to kill this thing as fast as possible. Just bring your A game. Just bring your best team. And just hope and pray that you kill it. <laughs> so yeah. So there is chamber 3. Um, pretty hard chamber overall because of the vulture and the scorpion. But that's basically it. Um, for this uh, Spiral Abyss uh, commentary. So, yeah. Um, overall, Floor 11 isn't that bad. Um, the only problem is you have to deal with the Hydro Phantasmals. And as well as the Jade Boom Terrace Room. And as for Floor 12, the Lectors. And especially the Vulture and the Scorpion. So yeah, deal with those. And of course, if you guys enjoy this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, if you do subscribe to make sure to turn on the notification bell to not miss out on a single upload. Again, all your support is greatly appreciated. So thank you guys so much for supporting the video um, by liking and subscribing. It really means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here. And as for the comments, comment down below. What do you think of this Sparabus? You think it's easy? You think it's hard? You think my advice was good? Um, let me know in the comments down below. And also, do you have your own advice? Also... Leave that in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Spiral Abyss commentary video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.